Hello, hello, hello. I am coming to you from the day after I finished my either fourth or sixth book, depending on how you want to measure it. Sixth book is because I wrote a book in high school and a book in uni, and I think they're not super good. One of them was written in notebooks and like notebooks plural, and it just like it starts in the middle of one and like the three quarter mark of another and the beginning of the edit. Like, I don't think you could even find it if I tried. Um, so I don't know if I count those, but I have been on YouTube for four years, just over four years now. And in those four years, I've been writing seriously for, I started writing seriously in November of 2019. Um, so from November of 2019, and then started my channel in April, May, COVID, March, May, April of 2020. So in that time, I have written four books and two novellas, which is bananas, because I, <laughs> The funny thing is to me that um, I've written four books. Some of them I've written like twice. So some kind of criminal, which is my, like my, the book I'm like, it's the number one priority at the moment. Um, I probably completely rewrote that book at least twice. 1837, I started rewriting and had rewritten 80,000 words, completely new. So like I've written a lot of things, a lot of words many, many words um, in the past four and a half years. And I thought I would share with you what I've learned because it's a lot. Seven things that I've learned from writing four books or six books, or you could call it like 10 books because like I've written the number of words for that many, you know, like from scratch, <laughs> but no, it's four. Okay, so lesson number one is that I have writing intuition, not outlining intuition. And this is something that I think is really interesting. Like when you're writing, when you're writing in scene, I have the instinct, like I know where I am in the story and I can make decisions on like what needs to happen next, how the character is feeling, etc. Like there's a lot that happens in the actual writing of a story that is not in the outlining that makes a huge difference in what that outline should look like. I don't know if that made sense. But I find outlining to be very unintuitive because you're just like writing things on scene cards and that is tricky. Um, however, it is important and I feel like I would get less stuck if I did that um, more. Number two, all my stories end up having music at their center. This is just random, but like I, I just wrote the sort of climax ending for the Nutcracker Effect this week. And like that one is an arts book. It's set in like a, an art school. But even so, that one, my Christmas novella, um, my some kind of criminal 1837 was more poetry than music, but like all of these have this like musical or artistic thing, mostly music at their center where like the music, the, the lyrics are super involved in the climax and like the music is super tied to the emotional heart of the story. This just happens. I don't plan it. I think it's cool. Um, number three, setting stakes is effing hard and I am not convinced I know how to do it well yet. Um, I've also learned that stakes need to be simple to explain. That is the problem that I am coming up with in some kind of criminal at the moment, which is the, st the stakes are like, there are stakes, but they just, they almost need to be like, stakes need to be visceral for them to be the most effective. I always keep going back to the Hunger Games and I'm like, you, I just like watch clips of it online or like read little bits and I'm like so invested even immediately. Like the moment I see a clip from it, I'm like Katniss, especially from the first movie because it's just so visceral. Um, and it's really hard. Like stakes aren't as simple as they'll go to jail or they'll die. Like you, there has to be an emotional component before it, but it also has to be like super, explainable and they're hard. And that is like my number one thing I'm gonna be working on the next little bit. Number four, write every day is an actual bullshit. <laughs> um, I know that that is an odium, idiom that people say and I kind of just dismissed it as like, I have a full-time job, I'm not writing every day. However, if you don't, if I don't aim to write every day, then I don't write every day and I write less than the goal of 
then I, I write a lot less. So if the goal is to write every day, maybe you'll write like four, five, six days a week, maybe seven um, if you're really into it. But if the goal is like, I don't have to write every day, then you'll go like eight days without writing anything and that sucks. Momentum comes in clutch. Momentum, there is something to be said for momentum um, and keeping your head in the headspace of a book. And so Stephen King, I apologize. I apologize. I think your writing advice, I take it, I, I take it. Number five um, is that Word or Google Docs do not cut it. Can you believe that I wrote three of the four novels and all the novellas in Word? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in Word. And now I have used Novelpad, um, which is so great. Like the ability to move the scenes around, I don't know how I existed without this. I'm convinced that is why I was able to edit some kind of criminal and revise it the way I was, having the revisions, having the ability to move scenes around. It is just impossible to do that kind of thing in Word. It does not have the features or Google Docs. Also, the most dangerous writing app where it deletes your work if you stop typing is my best friend. <laughs> Number six, I have to write every scene twice for it to be an actual scene with a shape and a structure. For some reason, even if I have the scene outlined, I, it just, it needs to be on the page and then I can make it an actual scene with like a turning point and shit. But it just somehow, for some reason, the outline is not enough. I need like at least like a really shitty screen, like screenplay style, thing or just like the bones of the scene. Like I need it to be there so then I can go shape it. I cannot write a good scene right off the bat immediately from the outline. I need to do a substantial rewrite. Particularly because I like, with the Nutcracker effect, I like pants to my scenes kind of. So I, um, what's the word? This is not a gesture. Yeah, I would like basically write my way into the scene. So the first like 200, 300 words of every single one of those scenes is just, it's gonna be deleted. It's just terrible. And I'm like, okay, this is where they are. This is the character again. This is what they're feeling. Okay, and now scene. Um, but you do need that sometimes. That can be helpful. But then like rewriting the scene means like actually starting the scene when a scene should be started. And number seven is that four years, four books, two novellas, some short stories, and I have a lot of like, yeah, and some like personal essays, and I have like nothing, zero, almost zero out in the world. I have my Substack, which does not have any actual creative writing on it now, but it does have lots of stuff about writing, and I love it, it's fun, it's exciting. Um, I have a short story that I wrote based off a Readsy prompt, um, last January, January, 2023, that is like available on Reezy. Um, that's super fun. Oh, I also wrote, I have like three plays as well that I've written in this time. One of them isn't finished. Two plays, two plays plus an unfinished play plus two unfinished. No, one, two, two finished plays, two unfinished plays. There we go. It's hard to, to slot the playwriting in because I don't, I don't even know how you get started in that, but, but that's a dream as well. Anyways, um, nothing is a lot of critique partners, lots of beta readers, lots of workshops, lots of professional edits and teachers, professors, other authors, mentors have looked at it. But like in terms of someone comes up to me and I say, I'm a writer and they're like, oh, cool can I read your writing? Like, what do you have that I can read? And I'm like, no, no nothing. <laughs> like I have nothing for you. Um, and that's starting to annoy me a little bit. Not in that I'm annoyed that I like haven't published any short stories because in a, like an actual publication, because I do not feel the need to do that. Really? Um, I keep going back to, and I, this is my, part of my argument for why I don't want to self publish as well is like, I don't read short stories. Like I am not reading these like literary journal things. I read personal essays on Substack. Love that. Um, but like, I don't read stuff submitted to those websites. So how, why would I write it? 
you know? Or if like I really wanted to write it, I would need to start reading it for a while first, I think. Anyways, um, so I'm not, I don't mean like I need to self publish anything, but like having some writing on my website, on my Substack, that's actual fiction writing that I can point to and go, hey, you can read my work here if you wanna check me out, I think, would is something that I want to do by the end of the year. So that is my like mid year new goal is to spoof some stuff up um, and just get it, just get it posted on the website. So yeah. And it's Substack maybe. I think it might be my Christmas short stories that I started working on in 2019 because they're mostly done. There's six of them or seven of them. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've looked at them, but they're pretty spiffy. They're fun. They would be good for like serialized. So like the six weeks or so leading up to Christmas, I would just post one a week. I think I might do that. I'm toying at the idea in my head. I would love to hear like your experiences of posting your writing. Um, not, it's not self publishing cause it's not a book. It's not an ebook. It's just on a website. Um, like how do you share your writing? What do you say when people ask you, like, can I read some of your work? Like, what do you give them? What do you think is a good like sample to have? And do you think that's an important thing for a writer to do? Like I know putting it on my website, does that preclude it ever being published? But it's a novella, so it's never going to be published anyways. Anyways, the end of this really turned rambly. Um, so please ramble on with me. We'll discuss it down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to read some of my writing that is not my fiction, but is about writing fiction, check out my sub stack and see you next time.